And when we say, I don't feel forgiven, our feelings are overriding our faith. You don't feel it, but you need to believe it and bring your feelings under control. Martin Luther, in response to the question, Martin, do you feel that you have been forgiven? Martin Luther answered, no, but I'm as sure as there's a God in heaven. For feelings come and feelings go and feelings are deceiving. My warranty is the word of God, not else not else is worth believing. Though all my heart should feel condemned for one of some sweet token, there's one greater than my heart whose word cannot be broken. I'll trust in God's unchanging word till soul and body sever. For though all things shall pass away, his word will stand forever. And you base your forgiveness on the word of God. Every one of those feelings that I as you go through that and you analyze that and you respond to that and you know what God has done with your sin, you need to stand then firm on the Word of God. But we need powerful reminders, some powerful reminders of what God has done with our sin. By faith, needing to take God at His Word, no longer dwell on what He has freely and f fully forgiven. Here are some key scriptures to understand, and I encourage people that are dealing with guilt and guilt feelings to take these scriptures, memorize them, meditate on them, claim them, let them become very real in your life. Understanding what God has done with our sin. First of all, all of my sins, every sin that I've committed are out of God's sight. God can't see them. How do I know that? Listen. God, you have put all my sins behind your back. Isaiah 38, 17. When something's behind your back, you don't see it. And the scripture says God has done that. Now that's using human language to communicate a powerful truth to us. God doesn't have a back, God a spirit. But it's using that human language. Theologians call it an anthropomorphic expression. But it's using human terminology to bring forth a powerful spiritual truth. But God says, I have put all your sins behind my back. I don't see it. Listen to this one. Micah 7, 19. God, you will again have compassion on us You'll tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. The depths of the sea, 12,000 feet or more down. God has put them all there out of his sight. Isaiah 44, 22. I have swept away your sins like the morning mist. I have scattered all your offenses like a cloud. God takes the deepest, darkest stain of sin and he permanently removes it. And God doesn't see it. And a person that's dealing with guilt feelings, as some of you may be, you need to understand that. If you have dealt with those guilt feelings as we have talked about with confession and repentance and restitution and so forth, you need to stand on that truth that God has removed all of your sins out of his sight. He doesn't see it. More than that. All of my sins are out of God's reach. Listen to this. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. How far as the east is from the west? The most powerful telescopes that we have cannot see the end. North to south is elliptical. East to west, linear. Here's the way one man described it. How far is east from the west? If you start due north at any point on earth, you would eventually cross over the north pole, start going south. But that's not true when you go east to west. If you start west and continue in that direction, you'll always be going west. North and south meet at the north pole, but east and west never meet. And God said, 
As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from me. They're out of God's reach. One more. All of my sins are out of God's mind. Again, human expressions to illustrate powerful biblical truth. All my sins are out of God's mind. For I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. God chooses not to remember the sins ever again. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I remember your sins no more. Powerful. What God forgives, God forgets. God doesn't want his children who have dealt seriously with him, as we've outlined here, to ever have guilt feelings. He wants you to be free. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. I have a conscious void of offense before God and man. I have a freedom in my spirit, even though I have committed horrible sins. As some of you have. We all have. Horrible sins. We've dealt with them. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed us from all and every sin. And God said, because of that, and because of you acknowledging that, and not doing penance, but just acknowledging to me, dealing honestly with me, I'll tell you what I've done. I have put your sins out of my sight, out of my reach, out of my mind. It doesn't get any better than that. And you need to really grasp that and so you don't want to reconfess sins here's another trap so people have said to me uh i did this i said have you asked god's forgiveness oh i've asked his forgiveness over and over and over again for that i say stop did you mean it when you confessed were you sincere oh very sincere i said that don't Unless you commit that sin again, don't ever confess it again. God says, I don't know what you're talking about. I've removed it from my mind. I've removed it out of my sight. I've removed it out of my reach. Why do you keep hanging on to it? It's done. It's gone. And so don't reconfess. If you recommit the sin, you acknowledge it, you deal with it again. But don't torment yourself by doing that. It's a lack of faith because the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wipes us like clean. So don't go there. Don't reconfess your sin. Okay, let's continue to go. One, with trying to understand this and make sure that we have gotten it out. So, we dealt with guilt feelings. We dealt with what God has done with our, with our guilt. But there can still be that lack of response to God and to uh, our feelings of God's grace. So, what we want to learn is how to respond to God's grace now so that we can really apply what we've talked about in a way that will set us free from those guilt feelings and really cooperate with God. And we'll deal in the next section, we'll deal with some purposeful responses to God's grace, some definite actions we need to take in order to make this real in our lives. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.